right, we're going to be in Jeremiah 32, and we did the first part last week where it was the purchase of faith, and uh, he comes up with his cousin, Hananiel, Hananiel, his, uh, his uh, uncle's son, so obviously his cousin, he sells him a field, goes, comes to sell him a field uh, that's in um, Anathoth, where he's from, and uh, using the, the law of the kinsman redeemer, able to redeem a land, and we know uh, that there is a whole story about the kinsman redeemer in the Bible called the book of Ruth. Amen. Mm-hmm. See, God likes to send things that does the like sidestep. You got the book of Judges, and inside the book of Judges, you got Ruth. It's like a sidestep, and He wants to show you a spiritual thing with a good story. And there you got the church, you know, right there. And uh, uh, He gives us a good look at it. But the purchase—it's the purchase of faith, and and uh, we learn something with that. Why would He? Why you know the the there. There are going to be seeds. There's a siege underway. There's Nebuchadnezzar. He's ready to come in. He's banging at the door. The troops are all surrounded there. And uh, here comes somebody with uh, Jeremiah in and out of jail, Jeremiah, and uh, offers him to buy the land. I mean, it doesn't make sense to do it. It doesn't make sense. Uh, but you have to understand something. Even though uh, you, live a, you live this life of uh, you get saved, and then uh, God says to do things, and it's like like that sometimes it doesn't make sense god says god will t- uh, give you a request and and i know uh, i've had this myself where i sit down and i go it doesn't make sense uh he doesn't he's not worried about it. sometimes you making sense of it he's not looking for that what is he looking for faithfulness he's looking for he wouldn't have came to you and asked you if he didn't think you'd do it remember that so uh and then he uh, puts in, there's some areas looking at verse uh, from 16 down. We, uh, we were looking at, he, he's talking about, uh, he's talking about the, the, when they had delivered the evidence of that purchase, the land that's being purchased there. And uh, he says, you know, these things are, he says, thou showest loving kindness on the thousands. Okay, as he's talking about what's happening in the land. Thou showest loving kindness uh, unto thousands. I swear most even, uh, evangelical churches stop right there. They don't go any further. They don't go to the recompense. They don't go to these things. They, they go to the church. They sing forever. And all they know is in the end they know one verse. God is love. He loves me. Love, 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 love. And uh, what they have is the, the wrong God. The first attribute of God is he's holy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how he showed his love towards the world. Gave it his, the greatest thing he could give it, he gave. And, uh, and Jesus Christ, he, 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 he shed his precious blood on Calvary. Uh, but you have to understand something. Uh, God is holy and, and he's fair and he's righteous and he's a good judge. Uh, you can't be expecting him to just look past everything. I see this all the time. I've got to tell you, I see this. Uh, I'm talking about from our crowd. I have watched our crowd uh, pray for men to get off of their sentences that they committed crimes for. You know what God says? God says they should pay their whole sentence. You shouldn't even pray for them. Oh, we got men looking for pardon. I, uh, you know, uh, years ago I was in prison because I murdered somebody. Okay, you murdered somebody. Did you know? Yes, I murdered somebody. Well, I'm seeking a pardon right now. Why? What are you seeking a pardon for? You, you did it. Well, you know, no, I can get more places. I can do more things. So uh, what you want to do is wrong to get something to do right. It doesn't work that way. Amen? God says you shouldn't even be praying for these things. But uh, that's, that's the world now. And, and God says, uh, I got recompense. Uh, of the. I want to recompense uh, the iniquities, and then he goes through a little history, and he says, uh, "I brought you out of uh, I brought you out of Egypt, okay, by signs and by wonders. I took you out of there, and uh, and with a with a hard hand, you know. I uh, I see, a, I look at this thing, and I go, wow, isn't that something? You know, people don't realize this is really a short term, long term thing. Uh, he went into Egypt, and he he basically went after all their gods. We learned about that." And, uh, and God went in and basically tore that place apart. Uh, you realize that they lost their whole economy. 
they had a huge famine. Trade's down. Everything's down. I mean, they got blood in the rivers. All the water's down. You know, and, and they can't even come back. What's he trying to tell you? You better get out of there. There's nothing in Egypt for you. So the Jews got to leave. What? Well, look at the place. It's a mess. Okay? And uh, you've got to get out of there. Why? Well, well, it's a mess back there. Well, what do you think is going to happen now? Well, they ain't listening. They're not going back fast. They're not getting back there now. That's why there needs to be a, a judgment on this earth for those seven years. Why? They're not listening. He's dealing with the Jews. Get, I need you guys back in Jerusalem. Well, we ain't going to, we're not listening. We're not, okay, well, I'll just destroy those other lands. Get back there. Uh, oh, well, he shouldn't destroy our land. God is love. Why? He's working, working with the Jews. He already raptured the church. It's out of here. He got rid of, got his people out of here. There's some people out there that actually believe they're going to stay for after the rapture, like they're going to go around and witness. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> You're going to have a war-torn mess of, of fallout and everything else. You ain't doing anything. You know what you need to do? Get saved now. Get saved now. Get out of here when, it's, when the time is, basically when the time is right. And when's that? When the Lord takes us out of here. Yeah, yeah. That's the right time. What are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, and he goes through that history of it with famines and he destroys uh, and all that technology they had down in Egypt. And that's what he's going to do again. And, and he said, look at verse number 23. And he says, but they came up and, and they possessed that land, but they obeyed not. Thy voice, they didn't obey you, Lord. Uh, that's been a common thing, and, and today we see the long term. What's that? Here's the church. How are they doing? They obey the Lord's voice? No, they're not obeying the Lord's voice. And uh, he gives them so much, and we're still uh, not obeying. Okay? Uh, what's happening? They're not repenting. Okay? And God's only going to wait so long, and that he brought that out. In verse number 24, only going to wait so long. You don't want to repent. You've been warned. I'm not going to wait forever on this thing. Okay? And then uh, we start out in verse number uh, 26 because, uh, you know, in the, the natural sense of the things, this doesn't make sense. This purchase of faith, uh, it's just like any step of faith. How do you step in faith? One step at a time. Amen? So in verse number 26, the Bible says, Then came the word of the Lord, Unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the Chaldeans that fight against this city shall come and set fire on this city and burn it with the houses upon the roofs, uh, they have offered incense unto Baal and poured out drink offerings unto other gods to provoke me to anger. Why? For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even unto this day that I should remove it from before my face because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah which they have done to provoke me to anger they, their kings, their princes, their priests, their prophets and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and they have turned unto me the back. They turned their back to me. And not the face. Though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, and defiled it. And they built the high places of Baal which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, 
which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah uh, to sin. Father, we thank you. We ask you, Lord, to bless this at the time. Bless the uh, passage, Lord Father. Get it to our hearts. Uh, Lord Father, uh, uh, Lord, we I guess we really we, we need this. Uh, we, I don't have to guess. We need this, Lord God. And, and we need a wake-up call. Lord Father, there's very few here. Lord Father, and, uh, and we'll get this message, and we thank you for it. We love it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I shouldn't have said maybe we love the message. I think it's more or less uh, we know you love us to give us this message. <laughs> Sometimes God's going to tell you things you don't want to hear. Amen. You know, I, it's a tough thing to de deal with the Lord. You, you've got to say right off the bat, well, he's right. Everything he does, he's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. He's right. You know, whether good or bad, he, uh, for me, you know, he's right. He, he did what he had to do. He, he knows what's best for me. Amen. It's tough that way, but that's the way we have to take the Bible. Amen. And uh, he says, behold, I am the Lord. Now, he, he's pronouncing himself the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard uh, for me? Go to, let's go over to how he, how he expressed this in the New Testament. Go to John chapter 17. When Jesus was, was praying, and it was him and the Father... Only him and the Father. <clears throat> you, you know, John wrote this, but it doesn't say John was there. Right. Actually, I'm. Wait a second. No, he was there for this. That this was not in the garden. This was walking along, uh, probably going over to the brook of Kidron at that area, because in 18 is when he entered the garden. So he was walking at this time and praying at the same time. And uh, in John chapter 7, John chapter 17, let's look down. We're going to start, let's start right there. These words spake Jesus, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour's come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh. So uh, when he says he has the power over all flesh, and Jesus says, well, he's been given, he has the power over all flesh, yeah, you know who you're dealing with in these things. He says, I, ha I, have, uh, I have the power over all flesh. It's given to me that uh, it says that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Uh, go to Matthew 28. Matthew uh, twenty, Matthew twenty eight, and uh, let's look down at uh, verse number near the end. Go to uh, verse sixteen. He says, "Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth." Uh, who's got all the power? Well, Jesus Christ does. He just told you. It, all power was given unto him uh, in heaven and in earth. Okay? Uh, that's all power. He didn't say half of it. He didn't say got power in this. We got to, we're going to separate this stuff. Well, you take and delegate this over here. I delegate this over here. No, all power is given unto him. Uh, when he comes back to this earth, that's what he's going to be dealing with. All power is given to him. He's got the plan. The Father spoke, and he's going to do the whole plan through that thousand years. All power was given to him at this time. Uh, God, uh, God's get, it says in the uh, Philippians, excuse me, yeah, Philippians chapter 2, it'll, it says that he's been highly exalted, highly exalted and given a name that's greater than any other name. It's at the name of Jesus. Uh, you know, it makes you think when you go outside, everybody wants to be educated. I'm so smart today. Oh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, and all these other things. And, uh, you know, and, and you got to think about it. And you go, I learned about Jesus. It's Jesus. Just so you know, the name of Jesus has saved more people than any other name. Any other name. 
a Yahweh, Yeshua, Joshua, or whoever you want to play. I'll tell you what, nobody came to me with those names. They came to me with the name of Jesus. And that struck my heart. I'll take Jesus every day. Amen? So all power was given Amen. unto him, uh, and he's the God of all flesh, and the Lord wants you to understand, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything uh, too hard for me? Okay? Uh, since all power is given to him, we know he did all these miracles and everything, but you have to understand something. Miracles do not bring salvation. Okay? Miracles didn't bring salvation. In fact, uh, miracles, uh, in the end, miracles just can only help you while you're here on earth. And you have to understand, the miracles only last until the death of the person. Uh, you can heal the blind and everything else, but guess what? If they don't get saved, what happens? They die uh, with, with sight and go to hell. Nobody thinks of that. They just think of the great things. Look at verse number 28. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, a king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the Chaldeans that fight against this city shall come and set fire on this city and burn it with the houses upon whose roofs they have offered incense unto Baal and poured out drink offerings unto what? Other gods. And what did that do? That provoked me to anger God's looking at it as. Hey, wait a second. What are they doing over here? I've given them so much, taken them out of Egypt, uh, destroyed Egypt on the way out, destroyed their army when I got out there and with the sea and everything showed you. And you know what? They got to the other side and closed the sea. It would be a hard way to go. And what happened? Let's go back. As soon as they got out, what happened to Moses? He's up on the hill. He's been there too long. Let's get out of here. Where we go? Let's get a whole group together. We'll go back to Egypt. Why? What's there? Nothing. And that's how man thinks. He's an idiot, basically. He's a bunch of nonsense in that way. And he says, they offered incense. What happens? The first thing they do, they think they're worshiping the real God. They just don't, they, they, that's not the way. You see, it goes like this. It goes out and they go forward. They know the name of God, but what happens is uh, the name of God is great and getting saved is great, but if you want to worship, see, there's a difference. Now, if you want to worship, God says, I'm particular. Go back to the Old Testament, see what he did. Go to the book of Leviticus and find out. What's that? You want to bring a, a, a sacrifice? It's got to be this way. You want to bring one for a sin offering? It's got to be this way. If you want to bring a, a, an offering for, for a, a meat offering, it's got to be this way. And he's very particular. Well, guess what? He's particular about your heart and worship today. How's that? That worship cannot be without, and it must be congruent with God's word because he is inseparable from his word. God said words. You need to know them. Why? So you can obey. You want to you worship God, love his commandments, and do them. It's just that easy, isn't it? Amen. To get the mindset on it. Uh, I can't do that. I understand. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Amen. You want to worship the God? It's in uh, God. It's in what? In spirit? And how? And truth. What's the truth? You're holding it in your hand. We're going to learn about that truth the whole time. That's what we need. Yeah, we'll put a few songs on. Why don't you get, get a little, yay, get a little hype? Why not? But don't put all the <laughs> emphasis on that, and then you don't know God. And that's what's happening today. What's that? They're not worshiping God. They're worshiping somebody else. These people knew the name. They just weren't worshiping that way. And what did God say? You went to other people. And what happens is it gets rhythm and rhythm and rhythm, and then you just think about that, and that's it. And it's a mess. Let me ask you something. When somebody puts up, I got saved by Acts 2.38, did they get saved? You can't get saved by Acts 2.38. I don't know who, who, who brings that up. And the, these preachers say these things. They're, they're giving people a, a false sense of security. Amen. Verse number uh, 30, he says, For the children of Israel and the children of Judah, now why? He says, Only done evil before me. 
uh, from their youth. Now, he's not saying that's all they do. That's all they do every time is evil. Uh, they've only done evil in these things that they're trying to uh, do for me. They, they're only doing evil uh, before me from their youth. Uh, that, that's all I, uh, you know, every time it's coming to be that. And he says, uh, and they have only provoked me that. What they're doing, they only provoke me with their worship services. That's all they do. Uh, with the work of their hands, making these idols and everything, saith the Lord. You know, it's like uh, there's other ways. How about all these today? We got all these alternative writings and everything. You know, there's the lost gospels out there. What do you mean they're lost? God knows exactly where his gospels are, and so do you. They're right in there. There's nothing lost. I mean, what is God stupid? He, I can't find them. I got to get Larry. Larry, you know where they are? I mean, seriously, that's exactly what they're saying to you. We need to get some archaeologists over here. Why? God doesn't know where his book is. That's, that's, a, that's a shame on those people that think these things. He says they've only done evil. Uh, you, you know, I've given you everything, and this is what you do for me. Uh, uh, you know that you have everything in your hands to be perfect. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at uh, in chapter 3. I know you got there fast because all of you have been going over uh, this part, 2 Timothy chapter 3. You know this basically uh, pretty good, don't you? All scriptures given by inspiration of God. You know that verse. Well, let's go up to 14. And the Bible says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child... Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Every one of you from a child, I know your ages. You had that book in your hand. They didn't have the other books before the 70s. Nobody was giving them out. You had that book in your hand. I went to a Presbyterian church. I remember picking up my Bible at the house, and that was back in the 70s. Uh, a little dinky Bible they gave me. You know what it was? It was King James. Why? They weren't into that stuff yet. It was after that they came in. You know when they came in? When they started putting morons at the pulpit. Amen. Amen. When they started putting women and everything else at the pulpit and not listening to God, you know, uh, sin checked in, God checked out. That's just the way it is. Amen. And he says, uh, you, you need to continue. You've known the Holy Scriptures. Now watch, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, uh, faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What's that? You've got everything you need in that book. And God made sure it was all in your hands. You know what? During the millennium, it's a thousand years, you know what you're going to be studying? That book. You don't need anything else. Oh, well, there's going to be another. I'm, I thought that for a while, but i got to tell you something. No, it's in there. It's all in there. That's where it's going to be. And, and, and you think you're going to go deep? Believe me. It's going to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And as you go to the next section, it just opens up to a next section to know what? You ain't that smart, and God is much more smarter than you. Amen. Amen. I mean, I've been, I was looking at these things, doing math problems. I've seen things in the Bible. It was great. But I've got to tell you something. You can learn all that stuff you want, but it doesn't work unless you read this book. Because God doesn't need you to figure out the math problems and the code of the King James Bible. He needs you to understand the words of the, of the book. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's the words of that book that, that gets you ready and, for, and, and can make you perfect like that. And uh, God says, uh, uh, they're the works that I want. You only provoked me to anger with the works of, uh, your, of their hands. Like in uh, Isaiah, uh, excuse me, Jeremiah chapter 10, making things and putting them in the house, idols, and everything else. He says, uh, verse number uh, 31 back, back in uh, Jeremiah, for this city hath been to me as a provocation. You keep exciting me to... Uh, anger 
and, and he says, uh, you've, been a, you've been exciting me of my anger and of my fury. You're provoking me, you're, that's provocation you have, uh, you, and of my fury from the day that, when I look at he says, the day that they built it. Even unto this day that I should remove it from before my face. Now, uh, we can say, where were they supposed to worship? Uh, they went down to where? The temple. Okay, back in the Old Testament, it's like this. There's about a place. Okay, uh, I want to show uh, where, I wanted to show Larry where God is back in the Old Testament. I grabbed by Larry and I said, come on, let's go. Where are we going? We're going down to the temple. We're going down to the temple. Why? Well, well God's in the back. We're going to go see him. We're going to go worship him down there at the temple. It was about a place. And, and, the, and the thing is, after... After he resurrected, they could have grabbed that place. It was just around the corner, you know, from, from the temple. Where is it? In the upper room. Uh, I, I guarantee you there's a whole bunch of people that want to know where the upper room is so they can worship it. Just like today, today it's the church, the church, the church. Let's forget about God, but we'll keep the church. What do we do? We'll get shareholders. And they made it a business. That's what's been happening. They provoking him, exciting this, exciting anger to him uh, from the day that you built that thing. And he says, uh, uh, "This uh, unto this day that I should remove it from before uh, my face." So let's go over to Amos uh, chapter eight. This has been the problem here. Amos chapter eight. What's been the problem with? The temple. What's been the problem with the church? Well, it's it's easy to figure out what the problems are. You just read the book. Go down to verse number uh, eleven. He said, "Behold, the days come," saith the Lord God, "that I will send a famine in the land." Not a famine of bread, nor a, a thirst for water, but of hearing, of, of hearing the words of the Lord. See, that's where the famine is, and they're not going to hear the words of the Lord. You say, well, we, we preach every week. We're down at the Evangelifish Church, and we preach every week. We got a guy up here. He went to college. Where's the word of God? It's not there. So what's happening, the people are starting to what? Become malnutritious with it. And then soon, what do you got there? You got a famine going on. It's just a famine that's going on. And you got people that actually go to famines. Let's go to a famine. It's a spiritual famine. And that's what's happened to the church. And you know what God says? Well, I guess I've got to remove something. I'll remove the people out of there. I'll remove my church. Why? It's, not, it's, it's got to be corrected. And that's what he's going to do during the morning. He's going to correct us. Amen? It's good to be corrected. Now, he says, I should re, re, get, uh, remove it. Why? Because of all the evil the children of Israel and the children of Judah have done. Wait, i got to remove it, man. It's because of this church. i got to get my church out of there. Uh, there's a problem, obviously. Okay? Now, we don't have the physical. We have the spiritual. So he tells you that. And you'll notice this lines up, Larry. you like this. Look at the next verse. Look at this verse in 32. He says, you provoked me to anger. They, their kings, one, their princes, their priests, and their prophets. You got four offices. What did he give them? Uh, and he said, I gave you. When he, when he gave this, what did he say he gave? He gave you, uh, he gave you apostles. He gave you prophets, uh, he, gave, he gave you evangelists, and he gave you pastors, okay? And, and teachers, teachers is all of them, all of them should be teachers, amen? But they're your four offices that he gave later on. And, he's, and back there in the Old Testament, what, there's your four offices right there. How'd they do? Same as they're doing today, huh? Mm -hmm. Amen at the very end. Now, we don't, two of those offices are gone, uh, the the apostle and the prophet, they're gone. They were foundational, and they're gone. But how's the last two doing? You got the evangelist, and I got to tell you something. Uh, 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 when people, evangelists, why are we empty? Where's all the evangelists? Get them in. 
You know, or whatever you got to do. You know, get people saved. I, I see a problem. What's that? No, there must be uh, less evangelism going on. We're towards the end. Because of all the evil they've done, they provoke him to anger with all, these offices, he says, and, and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I mean, uh, you left his word, and, 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 and it's just been a mess. Verse 33, and they have turned unto me the back. They turned their back on me. They're walking away. You get upset when somebody turns their back on you, don't they? You, hey, you, what are you turning your back on me for? But he's saying you're doing that to God. You're walking away from him. You turned your back on him. And, and not, not the face. You're not looking at him anymore. Though I taught them, rising up early in the morning and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive uh, instruction. You need to turn back. Uh, turn back, uh, O house of Israel. Go to Psalm 90. But Moses, but Moses, but Moses, let's go to where Moses talks and speaks, excuse me, where he speaks. And, and in Psalm 90 with where God, uh, where Moses writes the psalm, God speaks, and he says, uh, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, what? Return, ye children of men. Return, ye children of men. Then he tells you about, you know, for a thousand years is but yesterday. What's that? He's trying to tell you, look, you need to turn back. And, and guess what? There comes a time where God gets to the point where you're not going to turn. Well, I'll give you a little help. What's that? Well, uh, I just destroyed your house. You can't get in it no more. Come back. Well, I can't believe you just <laughs> my house is destroyed. Next thing you know, what do they do? The old North Country way. Pull up a, tra pull up a camper and live in it. Yeah. <laughs> What, what should he have done? Maybe he should have to get, start listening to God's word. Amen? Now, look, I'm not saying that somebody lives in a trailer and I'll listen to God's word, please. I'm just saying, you know, you, you ain't getting the hint. His own people, they're not getting the hint. I mean, they didn't never get the hint. Here he is throwing, uh, destroying lands behind them, and they're going forward. And what do they always want to go back? Uh, wait, till the, wait till the trip. You're going to have people that want to go back. He'd be throwing hailstones at them. Oh, let's get back there. I was enjoying that fish that they had. You know, those radioactive things they got back there. It was really good. That's how man is. He's, he's not that smart, obviously. So anyway, let's go on. And he says, uh, he says, uh, verse number, verse number uh, 34. You've walked away. You haven't come back. But, but they set their abominations in the house, which is called... Uh, by my name, uh, there they go. They in the past they kept bringing them into the temple. Uh, Uzziah and all those other ones, guys that came in. Other, other. Uh, he came in. He tried his own sense, or I got my own way of doing things. I got this. I've been good to God. Other ones come in. They put idols up in the in the temple. Uh, they're profane his name. They bring their abominations in the church. I mean, nowadays they got everything going on. Let's bring in everything you can in bread, babe. Get those other Bibles in here. It doesn't matter. Just use what you want. We'll just conform the message so it means the same in everything. And, and, and then really what you're getting is nothing. All the people go home malnutrition. There's probably one guy who probably reads his Bible, goes home, gets a little bit uh, from his own reading. And you know what? In the end, he's about as dried up as, as the rest of them. Amen. Verse 35, and they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their, their own, their, to cause their people, their sons and their daughters to pass uh, through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it 
into my mind. He didn't even think about it. You realize they're doing it. God didn't even think about that. Hey, you, let me ask you something. God's holy, right, Larry? Does he think about sin? That makes you think. He doesn't think. Here we are sinning, and, and, and God has to see it. He doesn't even think about it. Isn't that something? I don't think about sin, he's saying. But uh, here he says, uh, uh, and they built the high place. Today, what did we build? We built a bunch of Bible colleges. That's what we did. We went around, we built them. Now look, they, they, they seem to be the right idea in the, in the early, uh, early 1900s maybe. They seem to be a good idea. And let me tell you something, guys got trained up and everything. But that wasn't the way it was supposed to be. What was it supposed to be? Well, you're supposed to get a church and then people come in and then you train up guys from the church and then they go forward and make another church. Amen? That's what you learned in the Bible. Well, what happened? Well, the business came in. Well, we got to get a business out of this. You know, you got to make money. We got to get more people and more people. We got to do this and we got to do that. Next thing you know, you got one church with uh, 2,500 people and the other churches with about five. Why? Well, they're all down at the big mess. They're using the school now as a uh, tool to bring people in. Other Christians, not. They're not evangelizing like that, other Christians. And then, of course, they go out and they get the best. Bring us your best. We can build our church. And what happens to all the other churches? That's what Bible colleges did. Bring us your best. Why? Well, we'll take care of it from there. That guy goes down. I send a guy from Bible to Bible college from here. You know what happens? He gets there and they tell him, oh, you're called to do something else. Well, what happens to our church? We sent him. We paid for him. Oh, well, you know, he's off on the other. Yeah, you're a good boy. Who's ascending church? Not even us. It's them. They're taking the credit. They're taking everything. You know, don't even look at that church anymore. He says, you build up these high places. You know, uh, how could you, you know, how could you do this? Uh, what has happened is their doctrine, it forsakes the family. You say, oh, no, no, they didn't tell them. Yes, they did. You forsake the family. What's that? Well, you've got to keep greasing the wheels. You know, uh, Larry, I'm sorry, can't spend time with your wife. You know, I understand everything. No, you got to get down on that street. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. And what they're doing is they're greasing the wheels. Keep going. Keep push, 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 push. Next thing you know, is the kids. The uh, one kid comes up. His father just plants a church, and he grows up with it. Hey, I know. I I have kids in the house. We planted a church. You know what became our first love? Not those kids anymore. Push, 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 got a church. You know what? You see it in the kids after a while. They know who you love. And that's what happened. And what happened is our children became the victim in our house. And, and these guys passed their kids through the fire. They thought they were worshiping God for those things. And, and you don't realize you're passing your kids. We, we were passing our kids through the fire. Not that they're going to go to hell, but let me tell you something. It, it, trying to get them back is, is, is harder than getting them in the first time. We should have ran our house and then came to church. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you my sin, man, as being a pastor. That's what we did. We, we heard our house. Uh, verse number 36. And now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, Whereof you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword and by uh, the famine and, and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. I got a plan. I know they scattered, but I got a plan, he says. I'm going to go get them. And I'll gather them out of all the countries, whether I have driven them in mine anger, in my fury, and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. Uh, you know, uh, he here's the big point. He can't count on them doing it. That's why he said, I can, I'm going to go gather them. I can't even rely on them. That's when the tribulation and all them things go. What does he do? What is, how does he get his people back? He tells you, I send my angels all over the four corners of the earth. You got to pick them up, bring them back. Why? They still don't listen. I pummeled all the lands. There's no food. There's no nothing. And there they are, still sitting there. They don't even get up then. And then they'll make every excuse possible. What's that? Hey, you know something, Bob? There's a big ocean there. Well, I'll tell you what. Go build a boat if you really want to see the Lord. 
Amen. If you want to see him, you'll do it. Amen. Verse number, uh, he says, I'll cause them to dwell safely. Verse 38, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Now, that's a great promise right there. And I will give them one heart and one way. You know, hey, there's 20 of them. You know, I got to get this way, that way. I got, I got this way. I got that way. No matter what, and God's sitting over there. I told you one way. You know, you just can't rejoice that, it, that God made it simple in one way. What's that? You've got to think about what he didn't do. Amen. You know, and, and this is, a, I gave you one way. Why don't you give us one way? For your own good. Because if there was another way, you'd mess up. You'd mess them both up probably. I gave you one way. It's real easy. That they may fear, ha, fear me how long? Forever. For the good of them and of their children after them and I will make an everlasting covenant you notice why he how he says he says an everlasting covenant it lasts what forever why because they broke the others every time I turn around they broke them so I have to make an everlasting covenant uh, like this why because I, I, I I've been trying I'm on plan Z uh, a and F, a B now that's how bad it's become and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away uh, from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from uh, me. I'm going to put my fear. How's he going to do that? Well, when you got saved, that's what he did. He put himself, I put myself in there. What's that? He said, you can't get away from me. I know you're going to try, Bob. You ran, you ran, you ran. But guess what? Sooner or later, I'm gonna, I got a hold of you. Hey, look, you know something? You got all these backslidden kids out here. They're backslidden. A lot of kids are backslidden. They're saved and very backslidden. And we sit there and we think, well, they can't even be saved, you know. Or they, who, who are you to decide that? And you think that and everything, but you never thought about this. There's God, and you say, well, why isn't he doing anything about it? He is. You have him for about, you get, okay, I understand. You're gonna, the devil's going to have him for about 10 years. I'm going to have him for 100 decades. How's that? People don't realize that. Amen. God knows who we're his, <coughs> even, in that, even, even out there in the world. And he says, uh, I'll put my fear in their hearts. Yay. Verse 41. Yay. I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly uh, with my whole heart and with my whole soul, for thus saith the Lord. Now look how he says this, like as. He gives his, he gives his way a similitude, <coughs> like as. So it's like as. Like as I uh, brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I promised unto them. There's the promise of faith. You had the purchase of faith back there, and now you have the promise of faith. Why? It was ridiculous to buy that land. But you're going to see how God's going to work this out, even for Jeremiah here. Okay? Uh, and you have to understand, Jeremiah was a... Jeremiah, uh, he was different character. I mean, there's like, you got Jeremiah and you got Ezekiel. Ezekiel's wife dies. He tells him what? You can't even mourn. Imagine that one. And then he's telling Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, you could be a prophet and all these things, but guess what? You can't get married. You can't have any kids in that land. That's a pretty tough one, isn't it? And he goes through from Josiah all the way until the end. That's a long time to be a man and not be able. He went from being a young man uh, to an older man in, that in just that time that he was there. Okay? So, uh, how would you like to be <coughs> Jeremiah? Can't marry, can't do this, can't do that, and spend almost all your time in prison and be hated. What a ministry, huh? You don't realize we're in a Jeremiah ministry, but we haven't, <coughs> we haven't gotten beat up that bad. Amen. So, he says, uh, he says, will I bring them up uh, all the good that I have promised them? And fields shall be bought in this land, whereof you say, it is desolate without man or beast. 
it is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. From what I, where I'm looking at God, it's just not going to happen. Look at this place. What are you talking about? This place is full of those other than God said, now I'm going to put you in there. And you will see all everybody else in there. You're sitting there saying it's not going to happen. And what's God sitting there saying? It's surely going to happen. Why? I said so. And he says uh, all these fields will be bought and men shall buy fields for money and subscribe evidences and seal them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin and in the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valleys and in the cities of the south for I will cause their captivity to return, uh, saith the Lord. And now the purchase of faith is now going to be the promise of faith for what he's telling him is that your purchase there, Jeremiah, was good. Why? Because they're going to come back in the land and you're going to get that land back, he's saying. And you're going to get the promises of that uh, land. Uh, uh, they, the short term of this is Ezra and Nehemiah. What's that? They left 70 years and what happened? They came back. And got right back into the land. Of course, we know that it didn't work out after that. And, uh, and Jeremiah, there's one thing Jeremiah knows more than anybody else about this. He knows his address. When the millennium comes, he knows his address. He knows where he's going to go. He purchased that land down in Anathoth. We read about it. Here's the receipt of cost, receipt we need. And Jeremiah knows he's going to go back there. Do you remember a movement? In nine, I think it was 1903, something like that. It was called the Zionist Movement. And the Zionist movement was first, they went back, they purchased land, and then what happened? Then the Balfour Agreement came through, and uh, then it was reneged upon that they would have that, that country, and then later on, uh, God starts to move again, and he wants to gather people up. Uh, I got those people back first. They bought the land. Uh, now I got the Balfour Agreement, and now you're supposed to be back in there. They didn't listen. Oh, wow. Let me just bring in World War II. Nobody thinks about that, do they? Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't go, I'll throw you in an oven. And he starts doing it. And then after that, what happens? Then they give them a national, they give them a, uh, their own uh, country in May 17th, 1948. Mm -hmm. You know what God's trying to tell them? Well, get back. Now they're not listening again. You better start counting numbers on that one. What's that? Sooner or later, God's getting upset. You don't want to come back? Okay, then let now. Okay. Uh, let's see, what's too good about it? Oh, they got, they're got they too spoiled over there in America. Oh, well, we'll just destroy that. Well, they're too spoiled over in Russia. There's all Jews outside in Russia and everything else. Well, we'll just get rid of that one. Well, they're getting persecuted in Asia. We'll just get rid of that one. You know what God's doing? He's forcing them back into the land. Why do you think he only deals with the Jews at the end? Everybody's worried, what about me? What about me? Who cares about God sitting there going, I'm caring about the Jews. That's my, that's that time. You've had 2,000 years with me. And he had all these movements, you know? But here's the thing. When are they going to purchase it with faith? So they can get the promises of faith. Amen? You know, all these, all these people that are, that are uh, going to be removed from the land and everything, we're going back in. We get all the spoils. We get all the land back in again. And we're going to have to rebuild it again. It's going to be a mess, but guess what? With Jesus Christ, it's going to be good. Amen? Yeah. And we're going to get just what he promised us. Amen? Okay. What a, This chapter is not a bad chapter. You look at it and you say, well, all destruction. No, there's a purchase of faith and you purchased it. You got redeemed. God purchased you. And he gives you a promise of faith. What's that? Sooner or later, going back in the land where I promised to you. And uh, guess what? Uh, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be working that land. It's going to be a better place under Jesus Christ. Amen. All of you here, you're going back. You're coming back. You're coming back. And guess what? You're going to work for a good leader. And it's going to be a great time for that. You don't have to worry about all the junk anymore. Amen. What a great message it turns into when you read it. You just look at it and you say, man, this, this is terrible. Everything's going wrong. And then God turns around and says, look, I need you to get a little hope. You've been beating up all. You've been beating up for two months on, straight two months on Jeremiah. I want to give you something to promise. Here it is. And he lays it out in front of you. 
you know what, let's keep hold of this message right here as we go through the rest of the book. Amen? The promises of faith. Just that great. Amen? It's good to be saved. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we ask you, Lord, to bless that time. Keep these things in our heart, Lord, that we may know the good things and not worry about all the bad things that are coming about and how the destruction of nations is going to come about and look towards the greatness uh, of Jesus Christ who will reign and this civilization will go down and he will rise. And that's what's needed to do. We thank you, Lord, that you're, you're beautiful to us. And, and we thank you, Lord, that you love us enough to do these things for us and give us these promises which we do not deserve nor have earned. Thank you, Lord. Like I said, Lord, you're good to us here, especially here in Governor. We thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, Teresa. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Hi, Maggie. It's good to see you all. Amen.